In my first artist analysis video, I've expressed my love for JRPGs, and currently the game that stands on top of that genre would be Persona 5. It has a great story, interesting characters, fun gameplay, enjoyable music, a terrible anime adaptation, it has everything. And it goes without saying that the character designs are quite the sight to see, and the man behind these amazing character designs is none other than Shigenori Soejima. Shigenori Soejima is a Japanese video game artist that works solely for Atlas. He is known for the art behind the Persona series, starting from Persona 3 and onwards, along with its many spin-offs and even for one-off games like Catherine. And while he is currently the main artist in Atlas, he was actually preceded by Kazuma Kaneko, a co-founder for Atlas who did the art for Persona 1 and 2, as well as the mainline Sheik Megami Tensei games, but I'll talk about his art in his own video. For now, I'll keep the spotlight on Sojima. Now, this is usually the part where I go through any art books that I have for him, and with that being the case, I do own the original Persona 3 art book, as well as the Persona 4 Arena art book, and the Catherine Full Body Venus Trinity art book, as well as the Persona 3, Persona 5 Dancing art book, and the Persona 5 art book which is big as a bible, and the 2010-2017 through 2017 Shigenori Sojima artwork collection. As you can see, I love this man's work. And I know I say that a lot, but please do bear with me. To section off this video, I'll start with art from Persona 3 all the way to Persona 5 Royal while analyzing certain traits and techniques in his art style. I don't know about you guys, but it was definitely Persona 3 that got me and a lot of people into the Persona franchise, or hell, even the Shin Megami Tensei games in the first place. With blue being my favorite color, the color palette instantly drew me in, and by looking at the promotion illustration that shows the main character, Junpei, and Yukari in the classroom, you can see that the school setting is going to be a big element in the game, as well as that beast known as a Persona that is looming above them that is super integral to the plot. Also, the use of blue shades while adding small dashes of saturated red really makes this an appealing piece. During this time of his career, the technique that he mainly used was a painterly-like style with lots of brushstrokes in them. The characters themselves are also good in the eyes too. While you can say that Sojima does use an anime manga art style, what I like about his style in particular is how grounded in reality the characters he draws are. No one has any features that are particularly accentuated, and the proportions aren't all that exaggerated either. It's actually a breath of fresh air compared to the many generic anime art styles out there. Although I literally just said how I liked how grounded his designs were, one complaint that I guess I have with him is that most of his designs, especially for the social links, are that they are a bit samey. They are mainly high school students with only a few exceptions, and they wear the basic uniform. But Sojima does get better with this in the later games he works on. Whoa, it may be subtle, but the improvement in his art style is there. The art seems much more sharp and the characters seem to have so much more personality and life to them. He also drops the painterly brush style with a more smooth cell shading style, and this just may be my opinion, but I think Persona 4 has the best cast of main characters, just barely beating the main cast of Persona 5. I don't know, the cast of characters in this game are just so damn relatable, and I love how Sojima can have characters like Teddy seamlessly interact with the other cast members without being so jarring, unlike his initial design of Teddy which would have been a disaster. Which is another thing I'd like to point out, by having the physical art books you can see the many renditions and revisions he had to go through just to get the characters just right. And unlike Persona 3, in this game he stretches his designs just enough for some characters like Otani or Moroka to add variations to his designs while at the same time not making them look completely out of place. As I mentioned before, if you look back at the social links in Persona 3, you can see that his designs were quite tame. Nothing too crazy with only some exceptions. On Persona 4, you can really see that there's slightly more variety. Around a year later after Persona 4 was released, Atlas decided to make an enhanced port, so to speak, Persona 3 on the PlayStation Portable which included new characters along with some new character art and sprites. And whoa, you can really see how Sojima has developed from the start of Persona 3 up till this point. 
For example, look at the character portrait for the main character from the original Persona 3, and now look at the portrait in the port. You can see that now he really has a handle of the proportions of the characters as well as the certain rendering style he wants to go for regarding the Persona franchise. And once again, he used that nice cool blue tone really well in his illustrations. It is also around this time where he starts using a technique that involves him using strong black marks while at the same time using flat colors in his illustrations. When he uses this style, you can see that it's a bit rough around the edges, but it's still coherent and it adds a lot of dramatic feeling to his work. I'm not entirely sure if this is called tenebrism, but it does involve the same use of high contrast and value to achieve a certain effect, to which Sojima does do. Oak okay, Catherine is a game in which Sojima's grounded art style really shines. Since the main cast of characters are all adults, I'm really glad that they're actually drawn to be such. I know this may sound like a no duh issue, but I can't tell you how much times I've gone through anime and manga where the adults are drawn more or less like teenagers, or even worse, like children. And I know it's a style thing, and it honestly really depends on the type of vibe the game, anime, or manga is trying to give off. But even so, I'm just grateful that these mature character designs are actually drawn like that. Let's just say you wouldn't really mistake Vincent, the Catherines, Jonathan, or Orlando as high schoolers. In fact, Sojim even states that he uses real people that he has seen as a basis for his designs. That especially helps in the games he makes since they're all mainly character driven stories. And since the central themes of this game are love, marriage, commitment, and adultery, what better color palette to use for this game other than pinks and purples? It really adds to the seductiveness of this game. He also touches up his high contrast style, making it a bit less sketchy than it was back in Persona 3 Portable. Similar to Persona 3 Portable, Alice decided to remake a better version of Persona 4, and this time they ported it to the PlayStation Vita. And also like Persona 3 Portable, it added new characters and new character art. You can see he updated the sprites for the all-out attacks from the original, just like he did for Persona 3. And on top of that, he even drew older versions of the main cast. You didn't have to do that, but I'm sure glad he did. It is also around this time where Atlas decided to make many, many spin-offs, like Persona 4 Arena, and its own sequel Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, a traditional 2D fighting game, as well as Persona 4 Dancing All Night, a rhythm game, and Persona Q, Shadow of the Labyrinth, a first person dungeon crawler RPG similar to that of Etrian Odyssey. While I did mention how I love the cast of Persona 4, I didn't think they'd get milked to this extent. However, it was really cool seeing the cast of Persona 3 and the cast of Persona 4 interact with each other. It is in these games where I feel Sojima just adds so much splashes of color and just more life in his illustrations. Persona 4 Golden has so much more color from the opening to all the illustrations involved with it. The fighting games add some nice clashes with some comedic art as well. I also really like this piece with Aegis suplex in the Persona 4 main character. It's these types of illustrations you absolutely wouldn't see in his earlier work. In Dancing All Night, you see him add lots of neon colors and gives the characters slight redesigns to correlate with the dancing premise. He even goes full on chibi with Persona Q, which is definitely something you wouldn't normally see from him, but it's a welcome change. He even draws Hatsune Miku, now that is something cool. Seeing another artist draw an iconic character is a nice way of seeing what one artist emphasizes in a character in comparison to other artists, or even the original artist himself. A technique that he does develop around this time is when he mainly paints in a grayscale using a watercolor like brush, and it doesn't look like he uses any lines or any sort of sketching process. It's a complete 180 from his usual style, which utilizes neat sharp lines, and I honestly like the style the most since I do favor the more freestyle methods of painting that isn't really confined by any line art of some sorts. Now we've come full circle ending off with Persona 5. With this game, I think he's fully mastered his style and the techniques he uses to achieve very effective character designs in the games he has worked on. One thing I did notice in this game is that in some of his illustrations, he adds some screen tones. It's minor, but it's something that he started to incorporate in this game. Also, remember when I said his designs were very tame back in Persona 3? Well, in this game, there is so much more variation in the characters he draws. Look at the social links, or confidence in this game, like Sojiro, Munahisa, Atoranosuke. Even the villains have unique designs like Kamoshida, Madarame, and Kanoshiro, 
And on top of that, not only do we have a diverse main cast with different designs, we also have the metaverse designs. He didn't even have to do that, he drew a separate set of designs. We didn't even get new clothes for Tartarus or even in the TV world back in Persona 3 or 4. Hell, even in Vincent's dreams and Catherine, he just wore his underwear. But he went all out making a separate set of designs. That's just crazy. And in similar fashion to the previous two installments of the Persona franchise, we got a better edition of the game called Persona 5 Royal. It came with new bits of story and of course some new characters. Strange how they didn't put this on a portable console like they did with Persona 3 and 4. However, Atlas didn't just stop there. During this time, they also released the definitive version of Catherine, dubbed Catherine Full Body, and also added new story bits and a new character. I'm assuming you guys are seeing the pattern here. Joker also makes a guest appearance, so that's nice. They made two more rhythm games for Persona 3 and Persona 5, Dancing Moonlight and Dancing Starlight. And on top of that, they made a Persona 5 Scramble, a hack and slash Dynasty Warriors style game that is a continuation of the original story actually. Looking at the illustrations for Persona 5 and all the other games at this time, Shigenori Sojima utilizes all of his previous styles and incorporates it in these games. He uses a better brush rendering style for his character portraits, nice smooth cell shading, high contrast with flat tones, high uses of vibrant color, and the grayscale watercolor painting style. You can see that he learned new things for each project he has worked on and incorporates it in the next one while constantly improving and refining his techniques. Now that's how it's done. You guys already know what I'm gonna say. This man's work is amazing. I can't stress that enough. He's got all these art books available that I really suggest getting if you want to support him. There's not many social media that I know of, but I think you can find time lapses of him working on illustrations on YouTube if you search him up. Also, I know I didn't mention Stella Deus, and I'm fully aware that that was something he worked on prior to Persona 3, but I actually have no knowledge of that game, so I didn't think it'd be fair to analyze the work that he's done for games that I never played. Or at least work that I wasn't even familiar with to an extent. I also didn't mention Persona Q2, considering that Sojima actually did not work on the art for that game, or so I'm told. Shigenori Sojima hinted at a new IP beyond the Persona franchise, codenamed Project Re Fantasy, so I'm definitely looking forward to that when it comes out. Also, he did a few illustrations for the light novel revolving about Naoto as an adult detective. I never read it, but it looks nice. Shigenori Sojim is an artist that I see a lot of people take out in terms of style and technique, and I can really see why, since his art style just has such an appealing look to it. One last style that I want to mention is the style of coloring he uses for these two illustrations in particular. He uses it for his art book collections as the cover art. It looks to be a refined colored version of the grayscale painting he does, and I think this is probably my favorite style he's done. It's just perfect. I love the painting. It's like no lines, it's just perfect for me. Also random fact, the thumbnail for this video was actually going to be the painting of Futaba, but since Sojima himself said that his favorite character was Aegis, I thought it was appropriate to make Aegis the thumbnail for this video. Hey guys, yep, it's me, still talking. Um, this has been my longest artist analysis yet. And I'm glad to see some people actually really appreciate these videos. Um, I'm mainly talking about the artists that I don't see getting a lot of like spotlight like on YouTube. So I'm not going to be tackling big names just yet. Uh, it's mainly for artists that I feel like, you know, I don't see a lot of people talking about them at all. So um, yeah, uh, I'm probably going to do some speed paints, um, some other videos, you know, for, for the time being. Um, oh, this video took a lot out of me, so it's gonna be a while before I do another one of these videos. At least, like, an artist analysis of this length, at least. So, um, yeah. I, um, I appreciate everyone watching. Uh, uh, subscribe if you want. C please comment, like the video if you feel the need to. And, um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!